in the car on the way to Providence Canyon State Park here in Georgia. It's about 45 minutes away from Fort Benning and I needed to get it out of there. So I decided why not go on a hike. Providence Canyon State Park is a man-made disaster turned into a state park. They mismanaged the land. My understanding is the farming. Uh, they just did not farm the land correctly back in the day and it all the erosion turned it into a huge canyon so lots of red sand red clay everywhere and it should be it should be neat it looks really really cool if you look it up online lots of neat pictures and uh, I'm kind of excited to see what it looks like I will see you guys when I get there so the canyon is there's two there's two trails there's one at the bottom or the backcountry campsite trail which is about seven miles and then the upper trail that just goes around the rim is a little bit under two miles down the red blaze trail the backcountry trail and they say it takes about four hours recommended time to hike I believe it's seven miles it's really dry right now, but if it was raining, it could get really muddy. It's nice and cool under here. All the leaves. It was a beautiful day to hike. The weather is supposed to be nice all day. Sunny, and it's partly cloudy. So, really, really great day to hike. So, I'm on the side of a hill. Um, it's pretty steep. <laughs> I met a Boy Scout troop, and uh, they're pretty new, pretty, most of them little kids. But they're having a great time in the outdoors, and I love seeing that. It's great. Um, I know one, one, someday when I have kids, they will be, I'm going to introduce them to the outdoors, and um, just the wonders of the world, really, that's just all around us. But, uh, so good on those 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 guys to get out here and enjoy um, this beautiful place, beautiful weather on a Saturday rather than sitting and playing video games or something like that. But uh, yeah, check it out. Pretty neat, I don't know, you probably couldn't see very much with that, but it's really, really neat stuff guys. Having a great time here in Georgia. At least this weekend hiking. I'm gonna keep moving. I went a little bit higher and got a great view out of this canyon. It's beautiful. It's the one thing I will say about Boy Scouts, because I was one, I was a loud scout too. And Boy Scouts are very loud. Comes with being a 12 year old, I guess. So I'm kind of off the beaten path here. And I saw, heard something in the bushes that you can hear running around. It is, I thought it was maybe a wild hog, but it is a fawn. And it's trapped up here and it's scared of me. Beautiful little thing. I'd like to get a picture of him, but Ugh. I think she's gonna stay put. I think I'm gonna head down. It's getting hot here in the sun. Lots and lots and lots of erosion. There's lots of side trails around here. And the map isn't very good, even on the REI hiking project. 
So just gotta feel it out and make sure you got plenty of water. Let somebody know where you're going and what time you're gonna be back. Party on. So there's two options. You can hike the canyon loop trail, which is kind of comes down to the canyon and then goes around. Or you can do the seven mile Red Blaze Trail. And there's a few backcountry campsites. So if you want to make this an overnighter, you can. Or you can just run all of them. So this is a good place to to run trails as well. And there's canyons one through five that you can hike. That's kind of what I did today. I was thinking about camping out, but I don't think it's gonna happen. It's a beautiful place though. Some place I would recommend at least, you know come once if you're in the area. It's definitely a nice day hike. The state park is very beautiful. Something I would not expect smack dab in the middle of Georgia. Most of the Georgia that I've experienced has been just hot, humid, bugs, and lots of trees. So the change of scenery is nice. There's still bugs, there's still humidity, and there's still heat, but it is very beautiful. So this canyon drops a few hundred feet down in some places. Well, probably between one and two hundred feet. And all it was just created by you know, people farming and not rotating their crops, destroying the soil, and creating some serious erosion and in the 30s it was considered uh, they considered making this a national park believe it or not this this entire area and because of the Great Depression it kind of fell through didn't happen so eventually the state of Georgia bought the land and created a state park very beautiful place. Highly recommend here in the Fort Benning area to come visit. Alright guys, so I know the view behind me isn't spectacular, but hey, I just wanted to kind of explain the situation. So, which, there's not a situation, but my plan for the rest of this little adventure. Um, the state park's been great, but it's 423 we got plenty of time left in the day and I don't really feel like camping out here for a few different reasons number one I spend most of my time in the field when I'm on duty currently training at Fort Benning so that bed back at Abrams Falls sounds pretty nice right now second reason there's only a few campsites out here and they're kind of down in the canyon and the views aren't that great and there's tons and tons of foliage, tons of trees, so it's be hard to set my hammock up. So for those reasons, I'm, pr I'm going to be heading back to Fort Benning um, in the next 20 minutes. But before I did that, I wanted to go over what I took on my hike today. So this right here is the Hill People Gear Umlindi with the admin pocket on the front. This pack is not big enough for an overnighter by itself. I highly recommend the recon belt with water bottles and general purpose pouch if you wanna use this for an overnighter. So I decided to take this video to the back of my Subaru because there's a lot of people hiking on the trail and I didn't want to be that weirdo right by the trail recording a video. It just gets awkward. So, what I have in here. First, we're going to go over the admin pouch. So, the outside of the pack. Now, since I thought it was going to be an overnighter, I did bring my Bible. This is the greatest warrior. NIV version, New Testament. Pretty neat if you're a soldier out there. Has a soldier's prayer on the back, which is cool. 
I know you couldn't see that, but whatever. And it has stories of servicemen and women. Um, and just kind of their testimonies. So pretty cool. And next pouch on here, which this wasn't ideal. I wanted it more accessible, but I have a tourniquet. Soft tea tourniquet. And I've got some snacks, which I did not eat. <laughs> the chocolate peanut butter spread from the MRE is really good. <laughs> so I saved it <laughs> for a rainy day, I guess. And then I have some of this Shuma, or H-U-M-A, and the U has an umlaut or something. And it's a caf cafe mocha flavored energy shot. that there h-u-m-a so and then some pedialyte because use a lot of pedialyte around here handy dandy mre spoon now note ashley took most of the backpacking gear home so i have very little stuff so i've supplemented things from mres and other pieces of gear that i usually wouldn't bring backpacking but i made it work Um, five gum. And then it's set for the two outside pouches of the admin. And then we're going to kind of get into the, the side of the admin pouch, which I guess before I dig that all out, I'll show you what I'm talking about here. I, I know this isn't an ideal camera angle, but it is what it is. The admin pouch, which is here unzips the side and you can get all your stuff out and then there's the two zippers here for smaller things that I have already emptied so I've got four steaks just uh, El Cheapo Walmart ones 98 cents a piece and there's two more with a bungee cord wrapped around it because that's what I usually have in my rucksack and I didn't feel like taking the bungee cord off one extra pair of socks battery pack for my phone with charger hand sanitizer toothbrush toothpaste floss and a pretty significant first aid kit I brought a bigger one this time because there's I knew there's gonna be more people and if somebody got hurt I'd have extra stuff with me and then I've got my sea to summit towel and a signaling mirror the mirror I use to shave in the field and that's it for the admin pouch so I'll insert a picture like right here um, with all the stuff that was specifically in the admin pouch. So you can kind of have a clue of how much stuff you can fit in the pouch. So what's on the top? Right here. I've got a, I'm not sure the size, but it's an AquaQuest tarp for my hammock. When I use, I think it's huge. It's like an eight by 10 or something. And then I've got, this is something I wouldn't usually take backpacking, but it'll work in a pinch. It is the, the BDS Tactical Tactical Fanny Pack. And I've got things that I could use quickly. Um, my headlamp, an electric chem light, pocket knife, a hanky. and signaling panel and that's it oh yeah duct tape and paracord as well in the fanny pack that just sits on the top it just gave me a little bit of extra storage that I needed so for the inside I've got my food which I'll get into in a minute another half gallon of water two quart algae. USGI Bivy, my hammock, 
the straps in there and it's a uh, one that has an integrated bug net. I don't know the brand, it's just kind of a rando hammock. And then in the bottom here, I've got a poncho liner and a stuff sack with a Under Armour button up top and my fleece cap just in case I got chilly at night, which probably wasn't gonna happen, but I just packed it anyways. So, what did I bring with me to eat? On the way, I had to stop at Walmart to pick up some waterproof or water-resistant bags. So I wasn't sure if I was going to have to put it in a tree or something, so I had to pick up a few of these. And again, Ashley took all the backpack and stuff home, so I'm resorting to a MRE spoon for my eating, uh, my eating utensil. So, for an overnight trip, this is plenty of food for two days, one night excursion. It's probably around a pound of food. That's what I try to try to stick with. About no more than a pound of food per day that I'm out on the trail. So, the first snack that I have here is some almonds. These are smoked almonds. Plenty for a day. Then if I ran out though, I would have my David seeds, the ranch flavor. Next up, for breakfast and during the day, I've got some white chocolate macadamia nut cliff bars and one of those Nature Valley Biscuits, the blueberry flavor. Now, one of the things I picked up at Walmart, which if you looked at my Instagram story, you'd have seen. Premium white chicken. Very excited to see that Walmart carries these. They probably have for a while. I just haven't seen them until today. I know Tyson Chicken always had theirs, but this is like a dollar. Can't beat that. So I pack two of those for dinner. I had some chocolate pudding dessert powder from an MRE. Can't, you can say a lot of bad stuff about MREs, but the chocolate pudding is pretty darn good. And the final few things, I had another Cliff Bar. I bought some of these at Walmart too, some chocolate brownie ones because they're my favorite. And since I didn't have my water filter with me, I brought the neutralizing tablets and the drinking water purification tablets. So I was prepared in case I ran out of water, which I was carrying a gallon, so really for a day, a day and a half, I would probably have been fine. I've been cutting it close, but I think I would have made it. But you got to be prepared. One final twist to this list of groceries for a backpacking trip. The reason I got so excited about these is because I really enjoy this chicken with buffalo sauce. On my way, I picked up some buffalo sauce from. Burger King. Okay? Mix them with the chicken. You can't go wrong. So we've got the creamy buffalo sauce from Burger King. And the chicken. I'm just going to dump the buffalo sauce directly in. I think one container of buffalo will suffice. Mm. Gonna get the extra out with this spoon. Can't be wasting it.
And I've never done this before for backpacking, so we'll see what it tastes like. Oh, and uh, I will note, the army has ruined the chicken chunks MRE, like they've ruined a few other different things. Um, and they put barbecue sauce with it, rather than buffalo. They took out the buffalo sauce, and they put barbecue sauce with it. Now, it sounds like it'd be okay. However, the barbecue sauce does not mix well with the water that comes in the chicken, so it doesn't stick to the chicken like the buffalo sauce did. Here it is, folks. Solid. It's a no-cook, tasty meal with thirteen grams of protein. Can't go wrong. Highly recommend buffalo sauce and premium chicken from Walmart. So this is the second time that I forgot to do an ending to my YouTube video. So I figured I'd share a few pictures with you guys that I took during my little hike. Overall, the hike was about between three and a half and four and a half miles, somewhere in there. It was a great hike. It took me about three hours, four hours, and I definitely just, it was a stroll. I was not pushing uh, very quickly at all, but I had a great time at the Providence Canyon State Park here in Georgia. Definitely a hike that I recommend, especially if you're stationed at Fort Benning and you like to hike. So thanks guys for watching. I really appreciate the support, you know, the likes, the comments on all my different videos. I hope that they're helpful, give you guys ideas on gear, places to visit, and I hope I'm making a positive impact with you guys out there because I know I've learned a ton from the people, uh, many people here on YouTube. So again, thanks guys for watching. Thanks for the support and enjoy the outdoors. We'll see you next time.